Hey everybody, De really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Pio Fiore, Fated Memories. We have finished the provisioning in the last episode and uh, came back. Somebody was wandering around. Some boy came to us and said, I've come for you. But then he disappeared. <laughs> and so I told uh, Sophia and Elena about it. And Sophia seems to be here alone in the dark talking to herself or somebody else. Let's see. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Yes. Yes, that's right. This has never happened before. We may need to hurry. What's never happened before? I am blessed to have finished my duties for today. Thank you for watching over... I was praying, I guess. In the middle of my prayer, someone knocked on the door. At this hour? You're interrupting my prayers. Come in. Sister Sophia, I didn't expect to see you here. Is there a problem? I just thought... I wanted to see you. Huh? <laughs> Perhaps that sounds strange, considering we see each other every day. But I have the feeling you're going to be kidnapped soon and I might not even see you tomorrow morning. We haven't talked in quite a while, so I thought that now would be a good time. Of course. This reminds me how I used to go see you when I was scared and couldn't sleep. Even then, you were a strong child. You only came to me when you had a bad dream. Sister Sophia. I know how you used to restrain yourself. I'm sure you wanted to see me more often back then. Oh, but it was so long ago. Couldn't monopolize you. I wasn't the only child here. Yes, and from now on, if there's anything at all on your mind, feel free to see me. Having children to talk to is something that brings us adults joy. You're calling me a child? Oh, Sister Sophia, you still see me as a kid, don't you? Why, yes, you will always be a child of our church, and a child to me as well. As you pretty much raised me from the beginning, I think. Listen carefully, Liliana. Her eyes were filled with love and fear as she spoke my name. Regardless of the situation or circumstance, you are a family to us here. The Lord will protect you no matter what happens. And of course... Sister Sophia smiled and patted my head like I was a small child again. I will protect you too. I promise. Sister Sophia... What is this all about? I was about to ask, but my intuition told me otherwise. I decided to keep the question to myself. Oh, she should have asked anyway. I doubt she'd tell you, though. <sighs> Still can't sleep. I couldn't sleep. I kept dwelling on what happened today, and it was keeping me awake. Maybe I should take a walk in the graveyard. Hmm. Maybe I should pray. I got up from my bed. Without changing, I headed to the church. <laughs> Having the church all to myself, tonight is really something special. Huh? Where did you... How did you get in here? I came to speak with you. You've come for me again? I believe we were interrupted earlier. I need you to come with me. This must be confusing, but I'll explain later. Don't be afraid. Huh? What? Huh? What in the world is going on here? I'm not even dressed, am I? He walked towards me and reached his hand out to my arm. Is he going to abduct me? N no! See, I think the sister knew this was going to happen. I tried to move him away from me when... <laughs> Suddenly, the doors opened and the cold night air blew inside. The moonlight brightened the doorway. Don't move. Ah! Uh, Dante Falzone, to the rescue. Dante Falzone, what is he? The young man next to me sighed as I tried to figure out what was going on. After all this, more interruptions. I know what the rats are up to. 
family members appeared from behind Dante. Is that it? You'll need an army if you seriously want to stop me. The words the young man said didn't sound like a bluff. Is he that powerful, or is he just fast? He was very serious. Let's go. I can protect you against all of them without a problem. Whoa. What kind of powers you got, dude? W wait! Dante! Get away from Lily. Sophia rushed in and stood between me and the young man. Sister Sophia! Another. Everybody's getting in your way. <laughs> I won't allow anyone to get in the way, even you, sister. In his hand was a cross-shaped dagger, ready to come down on her. No, you don't. <laughs> that was a really cool s picture with the shot. I should have paused it. The young man sneered at Dante's gun. He quickly and easily moved to avoid the oncoming bullets. The gunshots resounded through the hall. A hit would have brought the young man down to the ground, but he continued to dodge them, seeking a way to come closer to me when... Over here. A voice jumped into my ears. Huh? How did you get over here? Without thinking, I reached out my hand. Signor Falzone took my hand in his and then pulled me into his arms. What, I will gladly fall? As he held me, the gunshots continued once more through the halls. With each gunshot, I could feel the vibration from his body through mine. Cover me. Sir! The members of the Falzone family directed their shots at the young man. Yes, he really is just fast. We made our escape from the church. If he has powers, well, he hasn't manifested them here. Aside from dodging bullets, I mean, that's gotta be a power. Wait! Sister Sophia! As I screamed in sorrow, he looked at me sternly. His voice was cold when he spoke. Silence. He pushed me into a black car that was waiting along the road. He then jumped in and the car sped off. Well, what's going on? Nothing was making sense. It, it was as if I had fallen asleep and I was having another bad dream like I used to. But the smell of gunpowder was so strong that I knew it couldn't be a dream. This wasn't a dream. I was forced to accept the new reality unfolding before me. Is he really not going to talk to me at all? We're just going to ride in silence in the back of this car here? Chapter 1. Ansia. Ansia. The car came to a stop in front of a manor in False, and I was ushered out. Is this the Falzone family's... Follow me. Without a second glance at me, he began to walk ahead. Coming. Hmm. I was so confused, but had little choice than to follow him. We ascended the red carpeted stairs and finally stopped at the end of the corridor. Oh. This is your room. It's really quite nice. Much better than my dingy little dungeon room. My room? The door leads to the bath. It's only accessible through there. Feel free to use what you need here. If you require anything else, you can call for the housemaid. W wait just a moment. What is it? Right. I have one of my men standing to guard you. He'll be at your disposal. So it doesn't sound like I'm being held captive, exactly. Guard? If you're not satisfied with him, he can be replaced. Uh, that's not important. Hmm? Am I really going to be staying here? You, you can't just decide that. You just grab me and put me in a room and be like, you're staying here. What about my house? What about my things? Well, you know, not house, but the place I was staying in. <sighs> he gave me a heavy sigh and spoke to me in a dismissive way. Is that even a question? Yes. Uh, of course it's a question. <sighs> it's like, can I just... 
Put a girl in a safe room and not have her ask questions for once? Oh, for goodness sake. Th there's no need to sigh like that. An irritated frown came across his face, but I couldn't keep quiet any longer. If someone comes to abduct me, then you appear out of nowhere, and a gunfight breaks out of the church. Now you bring me here, and you still can't provide me with a simple explanation. Do you honestly expect me to understand what's going on? Of course not. Now that I think back, maybe reaching my hand out to him was a mistake. Well, I mean, you were looking for protection, you were scared. I felt a wave of dread come over me. And, you know, Dante was more familiar, the other guy was a complete stranger. Liliana Adornato, you were attacked at the church, correct? Well, not exactly attacked. Yes, that's right. If you had stayed, do you think things would have gone better? Well, I suppose not. We need to determine who is behind the attack before they strike again. Until we figure things out, you need to stay hiding away from the church. Wait, so you brought me here to protect me? I thought that was clear. <laughs> Not exactly, it was all very confusing. Uh... <sighs> Anything else? How did you know I was in trouble? And was I even actually in trouble? I did have another question. Let's see. Why did you save me? How did you know I needed saving? So, why did you save me? I was merely there by coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences. By coincidence? Um, really? So, it was coincidence that you and your men were at the church at that precise moment. <sighs> yes, it was. I cannot put it any other way. Is there a problem with someone like myself taking a nighttime stroll? No, but coming into a church that should have been locked in the first place. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I couldn't say anything in objection. Are we finished? If so, go to sleep. Wait, I still have... I'll only say this once. I'm a busy man with no time to spare for you. Uh, well, if you're going to be rude, you may as well have not saved me after all. His harsh words dug deep into whatever hope I had left. Then he walked out of the room. He didn't even look back. Ugh. The room was adorned with lavish furniture, far finer than I had ever seen before. Staying in such a room was a once-in-a-lifetime chance for someone like myself. But that didn't make me feel any better. Who was that trying to abduct me? I hope Sister Sophia is all right. I wonder if everyone else is safe. And how did Dante Falzone happen to be there? And why did he bring me here? If he wanted to offer me protection, he could have left me with the police. The Falzone family is on good terms with the authorities. There's no reason they'd avoid them. Well, they may have doubts about the police's ability to protect me, depending on who's trying to kidnap me. Even after going to bed, my mind still raced. Plus, you're in a new place. It's really hard to sleep in a bed that's not your own. I mean, at least for me. Images played over and over in my mind. The haunting fact that I had almost been kidnapped sent a chill down my spine. I doubt I'll be able to sleep tonight. Did I? As expected, my eyes were painfully heavy the next morning. So cold. The fluffy blanket should have kept me warm, but I could tell my hands and feet were cold. I wouldn't mind something warm to drink. And maybe a change of clothes? Maybe some slippers? Some other things that I that he neglected to provide for me, maybe? I looked at the door to my room. Would it be alright if I left this room? Asked the guy that's standing guard outside. I thought about it for a moment, trying to recollect what Signor Falzone said. I don't think he said I couldn't leave the room. I got out of bed and put on a robe. Once I was ready... Hello? Anybody out here? I slowly opened the door. Oh, is there anything you need? Uh, 
A lady passing by was staring at me, as if she had happened upon something peculiar. Are you the guard? Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't sure if I could go outside, so... I was having a hard time explaining what I was doing. She noticed that I seemed a bit flustered, and smiled gently at me. I heard all about you from the young Dante, signorina. Really? My name is Juliana. I'm the housemaid here. Juliana Seste? I'm Liliana Adranato. You can call me Lily. Nice to meet you, Julia. Oh, well, thank you, Lily. So, what wakes you up so early today? I was a bit chilly, so I was hoping I might be able to get a cup of warm water. Ugh, warm water. If it's warm, you gotta have some flavor in it. You didn't know if you could leave the room? Yes, that's right. Well then, follow me to the kitchen. Is it really alright? Why, of course. This way. I decided to follow Julia. She was walking very quietly. The others must still be asleep. The carpet muffled our footsteps, and I could barely hear anything in the entire house. We arrived at the kitchen, and Julia beckoned for me to sit in one of the chairs. Just a moment. I'll make you a cup of chicolata calda, which I guess is chocolate milk or something. Uh, you're looking quite pale. You just sit tight while I get it ready, dear. Thank you, Julia. I always thought the Falzones were very severe. But Julia is such a kind person. She's how I imagine the mothers of Italy must be. Well, she seems like the housekeeper or something. It was the first time I'd felt at ease since my arrival. She handed me a cup of chicolata calda, and I took a sip. Its sweet warmth spread through my body like a gentle embrace. Ah. <sighs> when I finished drinking, I gave my thanks to Julia and left the kitchen. As I headed back to my room, Who's that? Are you the guard that was supposed to be watching my room? A silhouette was moving back and forth around the entrance to my room. Is he looking for someone? Uh, huh? Huh? You're the boss's guest, aren't you? Yes, he's offered me the room for now, but... I wouldn't exactly consider myself a guest here. Or at least I didn't feel as though I'd been extended a true invitation. Hmm, the boss did say you were a guest. I heard he saved you at the church when you were attacked. Why, yes, you know about that? Yes, you should be counting your lucky stars that he was there to save you. I am. Oh, where are my manners? I should introduce myself first. My name's Leo, Leo Cavinus. I've been assigned to serve you from today onward. Leo Cavinus. Leo's energy was a bit over the top, but I introduced myself as well. My name is Liliana Adonato. You can call me Lily. Understood. Here's hoping we get along, Lily. He's so cute. I don't think he's an option, though. I would prefer him over the, uh, heterochromia dude. His bright smile had me quite taken aback. Yes, it's a pleasure to meet you. A soft chuckle escaped me, seeing his bright and energetic disposition. Well, no use standing around here. Please, right this way. He ushered me back inside my room. Tell me, are there clothes? Now then, let me explain a bit more about how things work here. First, I'll be bringing your meals to your room every day. Ah, room service. Sounds great. Are you sure about that? It would be far too much work. Well, the maids could do that too, but for the time being, I'll take care of it. But what if I want to eat with the rest of the mafiosos? After all, the boss told me to ensure your safety first and foremost. Not that I think anything bad would happen on the way from the kitchen to here, but better safe than sorry, as they say. You keep eyes on me at all times? If you need anything, call for me. Or you can call for the boss or Nicola. I have lots of options. Nicola? He's here too? 
Oh, do you know him? Leo's words sparked my memory. He picked up a lemon for me. Glad to hear that. That smile of yours is well worth the effort. Well, be careful. I wasn't careful, and he ended up here. Yes, I've spoken with him. He was kind enough to help me in town. That's so like Nicola. He's very kind to girls. And only girls? Probably. Wait, why did you mention his name? Huh? Well, he's the boss's go-to guy. So they're good friends? Come to think of it, I recall seeing them together at church, too. You say friend. I say right-hand man. He's our underboss. Underboss? Is that the consiglione or whatever it was? I don't know what all the terms are. I was surprised to hear something unexpected come out so casually. He must be very important here. Oh, you didn't know? Suppose he doesn't really like talking about it. Well, we only met for a couple minutes. It's not like there was time for full introductions or ex explanations. Of course, he's well known with the police and other organizations out there. Out here. Well, Nicola is the boss's cousin, so he's basically number two of the Falzone's lineup. I see. So what, he's the next in line for leadership? Roberto was very aggressive toward Nicola back in town. Now I understand why Roberto acted that way. After all, encountering someone as high up as Nicola could easily turn contentious. Hmm? Who's there? Uh... Leo went to the door and opened it to see who was outside. Ah, Leo. Perfect timing. No, you had the perfect timing. We were just speaking of you. As they say, speak of the devil. Ugh. With a surprised look on his face, Leo quickly opened the door wide. It was such a coincidence. With a smile on his face, the very person we were discussing came in. Nicola Francesca. Yes, haven't we already been introduced? Good day, Liliano Adronato. Welcome to our family. Signore Francesca. Maybe it was because I just learned he was the Falzone's underboss. I already felt tense in front of him. Did you feel tense before? Come now. None of the signor business. Just call me Nicola. Um... Okay. Understood. But if that's the case, please call me Lily. Nicola smiled at my ready acceptance. Actually, he had been smiling ever since stepping into the room, but... Something didn't feel quite right. Hmm? Hmm. Is there something on my face? Ah, uh, some very pretty eyes? Nicola asked me curiously. Let's see. You seem happy. Is what I have to say, because he probably is faking it. But I can't say that unless I'm on his route. Can't call him on it. Or I might accidentally date him instead. No, it's just that you seem quite happy. <laughs> Why wouldn't I be happy? A cute girl like yourself has graced us with her presence. It sounds like he's playing with me. I didn't come here because I wanted to. I was certain he knew that. Sorry, I thought I might cheer you up. But it seems I've gone a bit too far. <sighs> so, let me jump right into business. I know it's still very early, but there are a few things we need to go over. I'd like ground rules. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. Please don't worry. I'm wide awake now. I didn't sleep at all last night. I want to know what's going on. Everything's happened so quickly. I can only imagine what you're going through. Yesterday you were attacked at the church and placed under Dante's protection. This will be relayed to everyone here by tonight. Until then, we'd like to ask that you please stay in your room. We wish to avoid any misunderstandings. Oh, but we'll make sure this will be easy for you. If you need anything, don't be afraid to ask. Ah. Hmm. I should be as honest with them as possible. 
I'm sorry, but I've stepped outside the room already. I wanted to have something warm to drink, and I met Julia in the hallway. She took me to the kitchen this morning. Ah, you're getting Leo in trouble! Did you encounter anyone else? No, not even Leo guarding the room. No. Then it won't be a problem. Next time, I'd appreciate it if you would let us know first. Well, if there was anybody out there, I would have. But they weren't. Yes, I apologize. Now then, I need to take care of some other business. Uh, you must be very busy. Well, Arca has never had an incident where the church was attacked, after all. It just means that the Falzone have a lot more to do now. Uh, may I ask you something, Nicola? I looked at him cautiously. What happened at the church? How's Sister Sophia doing? I'm worried about whether everyone's safe. Oh, I'm sorry, but I can't answer that. I need Dante's approval before discussing what happened there. You can't at least tell me if Sister Sophia's okay? Was she accidentally shot at all? We always follow the orders of our boss. To that end, we also haven't notified the sisters that you've been bought here. Why? But at least let the sisters know I'm okay. Something. We can't risk information being leaked now. All they know about is the attack itself, and that you disappeared. But... I didn't expect them to hide my whereabouts. Why hide that I'm safe? They couldn't even disclose that information to the sisters? So they had no idea what happened to me. We have our problems, too. Things you wouldn't understand. I suppose Nicola could tell I wasn't happy. He shared as much as he could, but ended up leaving the room with a frown on his face. Ugh. Leo looked on, worried, but with Nicola's departure, he began to speak again. To pick up where I left off, I'll do what I can for you. I'll be around you constantly, but I hope you understand it's because I'm your bodyguard. Yeah, of course. I wouldn't expect that it's because, like, you're stalking me or anything. Yes, I understand. It is your job, after all. With so much time to spend thinking by myself. I understand. It can be tough being alone. Yes, so I'd be happy if I could get to know you better, Leo. Or... Is that too much to ask from someone who will be guarding me? Well, we might as well talk if we're going to be alone together all the time. Absolutely not. I'm here for you. Wouldn't that be like a totally natural route if he's going to be my bodyguard? <laughs> Thank you, Leo. I was glad Leo was so approachable, despite being a member of the Falzone family. It's a good thing Leo was assigned to me. Well, let me go and get your breakfast. Julia is cooking the best there is. Yes. The Cialata calda she made this morning was delicious. Wait. Okay, there's some kind of meanwhile story going on. Wait. Telephone back? What is this? Oh. Oh. No! Did I do the right thing? Oh, I have no idea what voice to use. What's happened? It's unusual to hear from you like this. It's about the Lao Shu. I'm assuming it's urgent. Hmm. The door opened without warning. There was only one person who would be able to get away with that. I nodded at him to wait. Nicola looked back with a grin on his face. Yes, I need to talk to you today. Got it. Got it. I'll be there tonight. Let's say, ten o'clock. I'll be in my office. Let me know if you'll be late. And the police may want to increase their patrols around Arca. Let's talk about it tonight. See ya. Ah, oh, I hate not knowing how I'm supposed to be voicing. You haven't slept well at all, have you, Dante? He's not the only one. I'll sleep when I need to. We have bigger problems to deal with. I understand we don't have time, but... I didn't expect for us to place her under our custody. We should have taken custody of her much sooner. So it didn't come down to the wire like that? I don't think we're ready, though. 
Did you say something, Nicola? No, nothing. I just think that things are going to get really busy. What exactly is going on? Wasn't it? Speaking of Julia, she's the glue that holds this place together. So you could talk to her about anything, too. Understood. And thank you, Leo. I smiled as I watched Leo speed off to the kitchen. Julia's cooking was absolutely wonderful, just as Leo said it would be. Well, it's Italy, so I guess, like, everybody can cook. Her freshly baked cornetto was flaky and soft and had a sweet buttery aroma. The jam was filled with pieces of fruit, and the cafe latte was rich with flavor. It was clear the ingredients she used were of the highest quality. But... Eating breakfast calmed me a bit, and as I slowly restored my energy, another question crossed my mind. Only one? Leo, can I ask you something? You may not be able to answer it. Hmm? How long do I have to stay here? Indefinitely. Well, I'm not sure. I think until the boss lets you go. How might I get that to happen? Or could I only wait for my attacker to be caught? Pretty much. I'm not sure. I don't think catching your attacker is enough to ensure your safety. What? After all, whoever is pulling the strings is still out there somewhere. Oh, you mean, if they caught that boy, that wouldn't necessarily mean I'm safe, because whoever sent him after me would still be after me. I get it. The boss will make the right call. Don't you worry. <sighs> he didn't really answer my questions. With an anxious heart, I continued asking. Well, then. Do you think it might be another week, or maybe two? Oh, this is like one of those police investigations where if, the, <laughs> if you don't give them the answer, the answer they want one way, they'll just keep asking you the same thing in all kinds of different ways. I only know this from watching interrogations on TV, not from being interrogated myself. I've never been interrogated, just to be clear. If things go well, I guess. And if they don't? Well, maybe half a year or so? Or maybe ten years? You're telling me to live here until then? Come on, it's a vacation. Look at this room. I'm sure what'll happen will change depending on the situation. You'll just have to bear with us until then. But can't you at least tell me what happened at the church? Isn't that the least of it? I want to know if everyone's all right. Ugh. I personally don't mind sharing that information with you, but... Probably somebody was hurt and they're worried that I'm going to run away to go back to the church to check on them. I can't step outside my line of duty. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be asking you these things. When I know I could get him in trouble. Oh, don't worry. I know it's rough not knowing what's happening. <sighs> Well, let me find Nico and ask him if I can share any details with you. Really? Yeah, I'll do what I can, but don't get your hopes up. Thank you, Leo. I really didn't have anything else to hope for aside from his words. That's something, though. My expectations grew by the minute as dinner time approached. But really, Nicola already said he wasn't going to tell me anything, so why would it be any different if Leo asks? Leo left to get my dinner, and soon after, Nicola appeared at my door to see me. Buena sera. May I speak with you? I heard from Leo that you wanted to know what happened at the church. You heard that from me earlier this morning. Yes, I can comply with what's asked of me here, as long as I know what happened to everyone. I understand how you feel, especially considering the situation, but... Our boss Dante makes all the calls, and we can't go against his orders. I just want you to understand that's how organizations like these work. <sighs> I pondered a bit on Nicola's words, then I began to speak. Then, 
This is the only other way. May I speak with Signore Falzone directly? Ah, huh. unfortunately, that's not possible. Leo and I are here in the boss's stead. Then what if you ask him for me, please? But no one will do anything unless he gives an order, correct? If so, the only way to get Signor Falzoni's approval is to speak with him. After all, he had the information that I was looking for. Hmm, I suppose you're right. And Dante is in his office tonight. I'll tell you where it is later. Th thank you. Are you just going to let me go there? But you need to keep quiet about where you got that information. And nobody's going to kick up a fuss about the fact that I sneaked down there to see him? Well, this is about all I can do for you. I do have my position to protect. This is something I want, and nothing else, so I'll make sure you won't get involved. I'll keep it a secret from Leo, too. This is all of my own accord. Well, that's all I need to hear. Leo will see me after he confirms you went to sleep. I suggest you sleep early and take action after ten o'clock. Understood. I'm sure it wouldn't earn me Signore Falzone's favor if I bothered him too late at night. Thank you, Nicola. You're very welcome. Um, oh, I might have to date you second because you're so nice and helpful. But no, I really want Gilbert. Till tonight. I spoke to Leo a bit before ten. And actually, we're going to stop there. And we'll sneak out to see Dante, who has been rather absent during his own route here. But we'll be seeing him soon in the next episode. So hope to see you there or in some of my other videos. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.